Okay. I was asking you while we were getting the solution, if you could explain the difference between Hamburg and New York cameras as you're going through here. Because I've been so surprised, even some of my friends who own Steinways didn't know what the difference is, and the difference is pretty enormous. Yeah, at least currently, and they are making some changes to their hammers too, but uh, the Steinway, the New York Steinway hammers, traditionally they're pressed in a huge press, but they use a, what they call a cold press process. So um, they're, they're pressed, there's not any hardening solution in that, you know, or glues or things like that that they use. Um, the other types of hammers that we see in a lot of other pianos, like Homburg Steinway or you know, most of the other pianos on the market, they call those a hard pressed hammer or a hot press. So essentially you just have a lot more tension built into those hard pressed hammers. So the premise there is that they're going to start with a hammer that's very, very hard, very, very tense, and so it's, the sound is going to be just over the top and then you, with needles, bring it down to where you want the New York way of thinking was we're going to build the hammers up they're going to start from a soft place and we're just going to build them up to where we need and then needle is you know to even out or whatever sure. they are making changes though you know how much felt you press into those hammers and it starts as a sheet makes a difference of the density of that hammer and how hard it can be in the tone response of it they've increased the density of their hammers over the last couple of years so it makes voicing them different you know yeah. you have to kind of keep up on it to you, you, you'll gain some elements musically, uh -huh. and you might lose some that were in the older pianos. Sure. So some people might be thinking, you know, oh, I have an older Steinway. I love the sound of the older Steinways. You know, not, and all the new pianos just don't seem like it. Maybe they're just not broken in or something like that, but it's, it's that the hammers are different. Yeah, one interesting thing um, as a pianist from, from my perspective is New York hammers, because uh, I, my parents had a New York Steinway, and then my wife and I just purchased a New York Steinway a couple of years ago, uh, well, last year, 2020. And I think they're a lot harder to get right, but once you get them right, they seem to be more stable for longer. Whereas, like the little Hamburg Steinway that we have, it brightens up a lot quicker. Whereas the New York, it, it, it obviously still brightens the more you play it, but it seems like a little bit more stable of a hammer, but... Maybe as you're doing this, you can tell them kind of about the little rebuild we did on my piano. Yeah. And I think it is because of the density of the hammers. So we bought a Steinway from the 1980s, gorgeous sound, but uh, we had new hammers put on it. And then the action felt ridiculously heavy. And we're like, why is this so heavy? Is it? And, and maybe he, Hiram was the one who fixed it. So uh, that, that heavy action problem. The voice, yeah. I mean, it was an older piano, so the geometry, the action made it so that it couldn't sustain a very heavy hammer. And who knows what was on that originally. Maybe the hammers were quite light, uh -huh. you know, to compensate for it. But the voicing on your piano was key. You know, that was a big deal in terms of getting the touch response where you wanted it. it those hammers did need to be hardened just a little bit, right? And yeah. Yeah, one of, what he's referring to is very interesting. Uh, we were going back and forth for hours at my house. He's like, okay, what do you think of it now? Okay, what do you think now? And it was very interesting as he put the hardener on, the action felt lighter. Of course, it's not actually lighter, but it feels lighter because you have to use less energy to get more tone out of the key. Yeah, a lot of pianists resist the idea that they can't tell the difference between weight and tone response from just hardening the hammer and voicing it up, but I can't tell the difference and I'm doing it <laughs> a lot of the times, you know? Yeah. So I'm just soaking these with this hardener. And in this case, I want more body out of this piano too. It's got a beautiful, you know, sustained singing aspect to the tone, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, the sustain on it, it goes, right? It, it, those lyrical passages sound really nice and probably, you know, on the recording, it sounded probably pretty good, but tactically, the way it felt to you to get to voice something out was probably too much work. That's one interesting thing that he brings up is, um, I listened back to some of the recordings I made on my piano when it was really heavy, and I can tell because I remember what it was like, but it doesn't necessarily look like I'm working really hard, but I remember having to work really hard. So what you see a pianist do on stage isn't necessarily, they might make it look easy, but they might be fighting the piano. And especially if the piano is gonna be in your home, 
you don't want to be fighting it because you can develop hand pain, you can develop all sorts of issues. So that's something that you want to make sure to get right. Definitely. So with this, it has that singing quality. That's kind of built into the belly of the beast it's in terms of how well they build the soundboard and the bridge and the interplay with the strings. That's kind of what's mostly going to be responsible for a good sustain of the piano and, and that it just speaks with ease. Um, but the power and the articulation, the, the tone color, the different colors that you want access to, those need to be addressed with voicing the hammer. And on this piano, like I said, I want more body, so I'm letting this really soak in. It's going to wick into the center of this. Okay. But it also, it, this, this is thinned in acetone. It flashes off really quick. So it tends to end up with a brighter sound. So here I am voicing a New York Steinway, but I'm kind of going for more of a Homburg feel, I guess, in the end, because these new hammers, they do it well. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, it seems like, you know, probably 80% of people that I talk to, maybe even 90% prefer Homburg Steinways. But for at home use, I've actually found, uh, I probably wouldn't, I mean, never say never, who knows, but I probably wouldn't want to go with, uh, so we have a Homburg O in our studio and then a New York D. And the New York can be voiced down so much that it actually, matches quite well with the Homburg, even though the Homburg's, you know, three feet smaller. Um, so maybe you could talk a little bit about that, uh, about size of piano. I, I don't know if a D, especially for the room size that we have was maybe the best choice, but I, I'm so greedy with that bass. I wanted the, the D bass. Yeah, well, I'm like you. I don't think there's such thing as a piano too big for a space because of the quality <laughs> of the bass and the quality of the the, the, this, the color of it as you go down the scale, because that's what you sacrifice more with a shorter piano, is the, the trueness of the tuning and also just how bassy you can be. You know, your, your speaker's a lot smaller, basically, right? That soundboard that's vibrating is a lot smaller in surface area. What do you mean by the um, trueness of the tuning? Well, when you have a short piano, to get those low pitches, if you notice these uh, bass strings on the piano, they're wrapped with copper, some of the old ones with steel. That's to add mass. If we didn't have that copper on there, you'd have to have like a, something like a 15 foot long piano to be able to get that pitch and still have enough intensity of sound for it to speak out. That's my, that, that's my understanding of it anyway. And so the, uh, okay, what note was that, Josh? <laughs> Uh, so to me, the, um, that's one of the main differences, especially as you're going into the low tenor break into the bass. That's where it's going to sound really off when you get a shorter piano. You, okay. you'll, hear, you'll hear harmonics a little louder that don't necessarily tune well with the octaves above. What is your ideal size? Is it the New York D or would you say the B? Um obviously probably not smaller. What, what, from a tuning perspective, is the D the best? Or would you, yeah, well, or is from, the B equivalent? In terms of piano, the D's the best because you get just a really, you know, wolfy sounding bass, right? Or I don't know if that's the right word for it, but just a big bass. Uh -huh. it, it, can, it can be growly and, and you can, it just has a depth that you don't get with the smaller pianos. Sure. Um, yeah, so ideal. I don't know if you can't get a nine foot, a seven foot, or at least, or at least a six. Yeah. And if you can't, then a really high quality piano. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that I start to really like pianos at the, the 510, 511 size and up. Um, and that is probably because we own a 510 piano and I've just gotten used to it over a decade. Um, but I do notice that the smaller pianos before that, tend to uh, sacrifice so much with the bass. Now, if you have that and that's what you can afford, great. But if you are looking at a higher end piano, here, here's a question for you, uh, before I even say something I'll regret. Well, I feel like I was about to say something I'd regret. Um, would you rather have something like a seven foot Boston or would you rather have like a five foot one Steinway and why? In that comparison, definitely the Steinway. Okay. The, the Steinway, the way they build the case 
it's they're, it's really high quality wood and they they just join the case together it's all incorporated together where it just vibrates as a whole instrument that's where a lot of that sustain and that kind of i just think the tone's more musical you know great. now the boston i can have a lot of fun playing a boston but and they're great you know but i if, if budget's not the concern i would definitely go for the smaller steinway i just it, it, it inspires me more. Sure. I don't, and I don't know all that goes behind it, but to me, yeah, um, you know, all the inner components from the rim to the pin block, uh, the rim, you know, of course, there's a lot, of, a lot of panels that are built from the inside, and then they just kind of slap the rim on, you know, glue <laughs> it on as a, as a, just a decoration, you know? Yeah. Whereas with the Steinway, the rim is just crucial to the whole instrument. Yeah, we went back to the Steinway factory uh, October 2019, right before COVID hit um, in the U.S. And, uh, well, maybe it was already here. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but uh, it was amazing to see that the first step is them gluing a bunch of layers of that. I think it's hard rock maple. Is that right? Yeah. For the rim um, together and then putting it into a press. And then they're like, okay, this is going to, after they press it for a day or two or whatever it is, then they're like, or hours, and then they're like, hey, that's gonna go dry for several months now, and that's step one. It's a very long process, it's very high quality. Yeah, for sure. It, so to me, the quality of the materials make a big difference in the end with the sound, sure. even if you have relatively the same design, string lengths, things like that. Great. Okay, so I just soaked those all together. I'm gonna get this out of the way, and then we're gonna get into easing the keys.